Senator Klobuchar. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, welcome, Director Ray. Uh, you and I have talked many times, and I appreciate the work of your agents in Minnesota, whether it's investigating uh, buildings that have been attacked and burned, or whether it is the work that uh, your agents did in investigating the bombing of a mosque in Minnesota, where you, which resulted in um, indictments and conviction. So I thank you for that. So last week, I chaired a joint hearing of the Rules and Homeland Security Committees on what happened on January 6th. We're having another joint hearing with Homeland Security tomorrow. Several members of this committee participated in that. And I want to start out with something um, that became an issue in the hearing, really because of one member's questions. Our witnesses all agreed that there is now clear evidence that supports the conclusion uh, that this insurrection was planned and a coordinated attack on the Capitol, um, that white supremacists and extremist groups were involved, and that what happened would have been much more dangerous if not for the brave actions of law enforcement. Would you agree with that? Uh, certainly there were aspects of it that were planned and coordinated, uh, but yes. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a, I just noted that just today, reporting in the Washington Post that on Monday, a complaint was filed against a member of the Proud Boys in Washington State, uh, where federal prosecutors alleged uh, that, in fact, they had, there were plans made for many different entries into the Capitol. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, there have been uh, a growing number of charges as we continue to build out the investigation. Uh, either individuals who are now starting to get arrested that involving charges that involve more things like planning and coordination, or in some instances, individuals who were charged with more simple offenses, but now we're superseding as we build out more of an understanding of what people were involved in. And there were clearly some individuals uh, involved, uh, which I would consider the most dangerous, most serious uh, cases among the group, uh, who did have uh, plans and intentions and, and some level of coordination. And I think you've uh, arrested now 20 members of that group or filed, is that right? The problem I, I, don't, I don't know the number off the top of my head. Well, but, uh, and so what I was thinking when Senator Graham was talking is that if, and they show up, we now know in this complaint with encrypted two-way Chinese radios and military gear um, that um, you must, there must be moments where you think if we would have known, uh, if we could have uh, infiltrated this group or found out what they were doing. And that, do you, do you have those moments? Absolutely. I will tell you, Senator, uh, and this is, this is something I feel passionately about, uh, that any time there's an attack, our standard at the FBI is we aim to bat a thousand, mm -hmm. right? And we aim to thwart every attack that, that's out there. So anytime there's an attack, especially one that's this horrific, that strikes right at the heart of our system of government, right at the time the transfer of power is being discussed, you can be darn tootin' <laughs> that we are focused very, very hard on how can we get better sources, better information, better analysis, so that we can make sure that something like what happened on January 6th never happens again. Okay. So we've, there's been a lot of discussion about this uh, Norfolk memo that arrived as you noted, um, with key people in the Capitol Police and others the night before. Uh, they testified last week, uh, the chief, uh, that he didn't even know about it until the few days before our hearing. Um, and in fact, um, while there may be some that downplays that intelligence, I will note, while we don't have the memo publicly, uh, that in that memo, uh, there were statements that Congress needs to hear the glass breaking, doors being kicked out, blood being spilled, um, we get our president or we die, uh, go there ready for war. Um, some of the specific um, calls for violence that we know uh, were um, posted at that time. We know that President Trump had called on people to go there on January 6th. We know that he told them to go wild. Uh, we know that in that memo there was discussions of, as reported in the news, perimeter maps, bringing back the wounded. And to me, it just seems like it's beyond aspirational in nature, that it seems like some of these reports that we now know exist out there were specific in terms of these plans that were going on. And um, I'm just, one of my questions that we will continue to be asking as part of this investigation we're doing uh, with uh, the Rules Committee and Homeland Security is, um, how can we change this so this never happens again? So these types of threats 
and these ty this type of information gets to the right people. And do you have any response on that? Well, as I said, in, in connection with the particular report uh, that you're referring to, the Norfolk SIR, as they call it, um, we did communicate that information in a timely fashion to uh, the Capitol Police and MPD in not one, not two, but three different ways. But do you think uh, it's enough just to send an email? Well, it's more than just an email, right? So first off, the email itself went to, uh, I think there are maybe as many as five Capitol Police Task Force officers on the Joint Terrorism Task Force, and the whole point of the Joint Terrorism Task Force is for the chosen representatives of the partner agency to be there in the loop real time so that everybody's got the same information so that each agency can use that information to do what it needs to do. But in addition to the email, so belt and suspenders, uh, it was verbally briefed, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't, it's hard sometimes for members of Congress to picture what these command post briefings are like, but picture the command post that we had stood up at the Washington field office, representatives of all these agencies in the room, people are coming up to the microphone one at a time saying, okay, now we're tracking this, we're seeing this, we don't know if it's real or not, but here's what we're seeing, and everybody's taking notes, and the whole idea is they're supposed to go back and pass it up their chain of command. And then third, in addition to that, it was put into the law, leap the law enforcement portal to make sure know, everybody got it. That. So, yes, that, that. having said that, I do not consider what happened on January 6th to be an acceptable result, mm -hmm. and that's why we're looking so hard at figuring out how can the process be improved. Right, and some of this, of course, is the whole structure we have uh, with this Capitol Police Board uh, that somehow the um, the chief. Uh, was still calling while the insurrection was going on, uh, these two sergeant of arms to try to get permission to get the National Guard. Um, and this clearly there has to be some major changes to what's going on here. I acknowledge that and I'm going to push for them. Um, but there still, to me, seems like they rely on the FBI and other federal agencies to get information. And we know that the New York Police Department sent intelligence reports to them, to the Capitol Police, that's on them. Uh, and the FBI's Washington field office in late December indicating there'd be violence on uh, January 6th. Any comments on that? So, uh, well, I'm not familiar with the specific NYPD uh, product you're referring to. I will tell you that we, the FBI, over the course of 2020, uh, put out a number of intelligence products specifically warning about domestic violent extremism including specifically warning about it in connection with the election, including specifically warning about that threat in relation to the election, continuing past Election Day itself and up through the inauguration, and including a product that I think we put out with DHS in December of 2020. So we, we have trying to push out information. Uh, I, I am reluctant to armchair quarterback anyone else uh, in their jobs. I can tell you we at the FBI are determined to do our part our part to make sure that what happened on January 6th doesn't happen again. Um, we find it uh, personally infuriating anytime we're not able, as I said, to bat a thousand and we're going to keep working to get better. Thank you. And I, I will say that the work you've done on your, um, your agents have done in investigating these cases, uh, to me, uh, that is very helpful uh, to get those arrests out there and those prosecutions, uh, not only because people should be brought to justice, but it uh, to me, is a major deterrent uh, for people doing this again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Senator Klobuchar.